Hey, everybody. Welcome to um, our Michaels Community Classroom class. We're so happy to have you here. Um, happy Friday to everyone. As you all know, today we are going to be crafting this super cute home sweet home uh, sign using Folk Art Sign Shop. So we're going to talk all about Folk Art Sign Shop, and I'm going to give you lots of great tips and tricks so you can follow along and do this craft with me today. And we have a lot to do, so um, we'll move quickly. If you guys need me to slow down, just let me know in the chat. Um, if I'm going too slow, let me know. Um, but hopefully you will all learn lots of great information in this class today, and I'm so excited to um, teach you guys. So of course, here's what we're making. So let's run down first, just through all of the supplies that you're gonna need to follow along with me today. So right here, we have this um, framed wood board from Art Minds, of course, available at Michael's. So you're definitely gonna need this. This is what we're going to be crafting on. Next, you are going to need some folk art wicker white, just some regular acrylic, doesn't need to be multi-surface or anything special. Um, next, we're going to need some folk art daffodil yellow. We are going to use our sign shop acrylic stencil paste. And of course, the star of the show are Folk Art Sign Shop Mesh Stencils. I'm so excited to show you guys how these work. Um, they are reusable, so if you like this sign, you can kind of um, readjust the sign and make it um, dozens and dozens of more times. So that's good to know once you have this stencil, of course, in any of the Folk Art Sign Shop stencils. What's next? Um, we have these really great application tools in our Folk Art Sign Shop line, which makes spreading out the acrylic stencil paste super duper easy over the mesh stencils. And all of these different tools were curated to um, make making signs easy for anybody to do. I mean, you guys will see how easy it is. It is foolproof. So we have these awesome tools. We're gonna need a couple paint brushes just to, uh, of course, paint on our super sweet lemons. Um, the stencil tape is optional, but I always like to have a roll of stencil tape whenever I'm sign making, especially with stencils. Um, and I believe that's it. Another thing, this I don't think this was included in the supply list. So this is optional, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. If you have a bottle of acrylic brown paint, go ahead and grab that because I'm gonna show you a great technique on how to stain your wood with using, of course, just regular acrylic paint. You don't need fumy stains anymore. I'm gonna show you how to stain your wood with just regular acrylic paint. It is super easy. Anyone can do it. This craft is super user friendly. So I'm so excited to show you guys how to do it. So let's get started. So we'll set this guy over here. Okay, we'll move the tag, of course. I wanted to leave it on to let you all see exactly what surface to buy at my goals. And of course, um, all of the supplies that I just went over, they are all available at Michael's. Okay, so let's go ahead and stain our wood. There's two really great colors that are in our folk art line that are available at Michael's that I like to use for staining wood. This one is real brown and this one is burnt umber. So any of these are a great option for staining your wood. They both um, make a really great finish. Okay, and I also have some water here. I should have mentioned that. And when you are using your mesh stencils, you want to have a water basin because we'll get there. But an important part of the mesh stencils is that once you're done applying the stencil paste and peel up the stencil, it's important to put it in some either running water like a faucet or um, some still water in a basin just so that the paint doesn't dry in between the mesh and that will prevent you from being able to use it in the future. So I'll show you guys. We have our um, burnt umber on our plate and I just have just regular water here. And we're probably looking for a two to one ratio of paint to water. And this is gonna be our stain. I'm gonna grab my just uh, you know one inch flat brush and I'm gonna mix our paint with our water. I love this sign. I think it's so cute with the lemons. It's super summery, super springy. And of course you can do this with any kind of fruit. You can do it pink and make uh, grapefruit. You can do it green and make limes. 
Um, I'm gonna show you how to paint citrus fruit. So the options are totally endless. And um, once you know how to paint our super cute lemon, you can make this sign dozens of different ways because we have a bunch of really awesome folk art sign shop stencils at Michael's. Okay, so that's a great consistency. We're kind of looking for the consistency of like chocolate milk. So we're gonna apply it to our flat brush and we're going to go just along the rim of this tray. And we're just gonna brush it on just like you would with normal paint. We're gonna go all around the edges. Okay, so now we're done. We can stick this in our water. And I just have a regular paper towel here. And we're just going to go along to where we just brushed our paint on and wipe up some of that excess paint. And ideally, what we would want to do is we would want to apply our stain to the inside rim and the outside rim to make it look more finished. But just for the sake of time for today's class, We'll leave it like that just so you guys get the gist of how to make the stain and how to apply it. Like I said, you just brush it on and then you wipe it off with a paper towel. And if you want your stain to be a little bit more opaque, just uh, apply a second coat. It's that easy. So we're going to move on to the next step. Um, let me know if you have any questions and uh, Felicia can relay those questions to me. And we'll move on. So we're going to break out our folk art wicker white. And we are going to apply the wicker white right onto our palette here. So of course we're not using our stain palette because we don't want those two colors to mix. Okay. Clean our brush. And if you um, don't feel so confident, then you can definitely take some stencil tape and tape off your edges so that you get really clean lines. But um, if you are a little bit more confident, you can apply your paint just directly on and just be careful around those edges to make sure that your white paint doesn't reach the rim of your tray. And we're just gonna base coat this with our wicker white. I just like to use the edge of my brush and just get that straight line right up to the edge. And I think in a few minutes, we will have our, um, one of my amazing coworkers, John, hop on to, to moderate and answer some of your questions and relay them over to me. And he knows a ton about all of these products too. So he will be able to answer all your questions in the chat. Okay, so I know this, is the, this isn't the most interesting part of the project for sure, but we are just base coating the whole tray. Oh, hey, Emma, I've been able to join. Hey, John. Okay, so John is here. He is going to uh, moderate any questions you might have and ask them to me in real time. And like I said, he knows so much about all this product. So um, <laughs> if he knows the answer, he will uh, answer it in the chat for you guys or, of course, relay those questions over to me. And if I don't know the answer, I will certainly go find you an answer. So thanks. <laughs> and sorry to be late, everybody. We were just running around here and I... Uh, and I am happy to be here and help answer any questions. We're happy you're here too, John. What have we covered so far? What are we doing? So John, we are making this beautiful Home Sweet Home Little Summer Sign. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, so far we have learned how to uh, stain our wood just using regular folk art acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. And we are base coating our sign to prep it to paint some super cute lemons and use some of our folk art sign shop. 
Absolutely. And the question people are asking is the paste come in different colors and it absolutely does. It comes in a full range of beautiful colors. There are um, different color sets that come as colorways as Emma is sort of showing you. And then there's like a master set that has, I don't remember if it's 10 or a bunch of colors in it. It's 10. Um, 10, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I love this set too, because if you can't find the specific stencil paste color you're looking for in one of the smaller curated packs, then it is super duper easy to mix and you can create your own colors that you need for your project. So this is a great first thing to buy if you're looking to um, start with your own book art sign shop projects. And of course, um, we listed this in the project description. We have a two and a half ounce um, black stencil paste, which is a lot. And you guys, a little bit goes a really long way. You do not need a lot of stencil paste to complete these projects at home. And we have the a black and a white in this bigger size, just because um, that's really the trend. A lot of people are making signs using uh, black and white hand lettering. So those are available in the bigger sizes. And then of course we have those custom palettes as well. I'm trying to pull it up right now, the exact coverage that you get from each of those little tubes. It seems like a tiny little tube, but it goes such a long ways. Yes. Okay, we are finishing up this base coat. Okay, we're getting into that corner. We are almost done, people. I was just what saying, color is, um, what color are you using for the base coat, Emma? I'm using folk art wicker white. Got it. Okay, so, so now um, I'm just. Uh, sorry, we were, she ahead. was just saying one of those small tubes, the 12 milliliter tubes, is can cover approximately 250 square inches. So you right. can imagine that's quite a bit. And the 75 milliliter tubes, you're talking about like 10 square feet. So that is a big area. That's multiple projects that you can do with these sizes with these with these projects. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so let's blow dry this really quickly, and then we'll move on to our next step. Okay, so now that this is nice and dry, do we have any questions, Sean? I should yeah, have we, yeah, no, we do. While you were while you were blow drying, so you just remind everyone what the stain was that you used first. Um, yes. 
So that is my apologies. I looked um, on the supply list right before this class and we didn't include a brown paint. So any brown, dark brown acrylic paint will work. It doesn't even have to be brown. If you want your rim to be stained gray or black, then you can use a gray or a black paint. But my two favorite folk art acrylics to use at Michael's that are great for a DIY acrylic paint stain is Burnt, burnt Umber and Real Brown. This is Burnt Umber. It is a beautiful finish, as you can see. Um, and we mixed a two to one ratio of paint to water. We mixed that up and we brushed it on and wiped it off with a paper towel. It's that easy. Okay, great. And then also, I think a couple of people were asking about the lemons because I think that maybe the lemons weren't included in the list or something like that. So what's which okay. um, stencil are you using for that? Okay, so it is not a stencil and I'm gonna show you super easy way to paint lemons and that's our next step. See, Great there you go guys. Jeff. So you didn't miss anything. You don't need to yes. try and cut a lemon stencil. <laughs> okay, so to make our lemons, we are using daffodil yellow and uh, wicker white, which I know we're on the supply list. So don't worry about that. Okay, so apply some daffodil yellow onto our palette and we're going to use, um, like a half inch flat brush. And what I like to do first, whenever I'm making a circle, first of all, you can use um, like a cup or something that's round and a pencil and you can trace a circle um, or you can just uh, dip your paint. I'm sorry, dip your paint brush into your paint. And I just kind of like to eyeball where my center is. It's about there. And we're gonna, make a bold move and make our circle. And the great thing about this sign is, I don't want your lemons to be perfect. I want them to look a little wonky because lemons are, are organic. They are not a perfect circle. And I think that really adds character to your sign. As you can see, mine are certainly not uh, super straight circles. They are um, not perfectly round. They are organic looking. They are not perfect. So we don't want perfect today. And we're just well, making out. that circle. What'd you say, John? I said, I guess I'm out because everything that I do comes out. Oh, perfect. Sure, so I don't John. even know what to say. <laughs> we don't need perfect. I know, just hop off then, John. Right. And we're just gonna fill that in with yellow. Says the man who showed up to the class <laughs> 10 minutes late. <laughs> Seriously. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. And now we're going to make two more. So we have our center lemon. We're going to go for our left and our right. Are you guys crafting along with me today? Are you watching this video to save for later to make this weekend? What does it look like, John? Do we have people crafting along with us? You know what? I do know some folks were because, um, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to remember who it was. Somebody said to me that she was going to be trying to cut her lemon stencils herself. So. <laughs> no need to cut any lemon stencils. No need stencils. to do that. That's why I asked. Hopefully you'll find this tutorial very easy. Anyone can do this, like I said. Yeah. But these class, yeah. I mean, listen, as Emma said, I mean, I don't know if you all do a lot of these classes, but I know people love to craft along and it's a lot of fun. And then there's a lot of other folks who just like to watch. Um you know, and then go back and watch it in the, at their own pace so that they can pause, you know, answer the door, turn over the laundry, whatever they have to do, let things dry because not everyone has the hair dryer. So um, it is uh, also a very good possibility to just go ahead and do it later. Yeah, totally. And of course, Michaels has a great library of previous Michaels Community Classroom uh, classes yep. on their website michaels.com and on their youtube channel so if you love this go check it out because there are tons of great classes and projects and instructors um doing lots of fun projects absolutely i'm just trying to look I, we, were, we were just talking about it we have done over a hundred classes with michaels in the community classroom since last may i believe oh, wow. um so yeah, it's been, I guess, a year now. Um, so I would encourage everyone to go and check that, check out that catalog of classes. And that's just plaid, you know? I mean, they've got things from all kinds of folks. So it's an unbelievable resource 
that is free and it's just amazing. And every class we do, John gets more and more perfect at moderating. Yeah, that's right. You can tell clearly that I'm. Someone's having trouble. Okay. okay, guys, I'm gonna hit this with a blow dryer because we want our yellow to be super dry. I always find it amazing how Zoom knows that someone's blow drying and they cut that sound out. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my original project. There's no shame in my game. Sometimes I like to look at the project. If you are trying to paint something at home, I um, encourage you all to paint to print out a picture for reference. Um, sometimes I find that it just makes it so much easier for me. Um, you don't have to feel guilty about that. It's not um, it's not copying. You just sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of inspiration too carry you along. Okay, so we have our uh, daffodil yellow painted on just three large circles, super duper easy. We are going to apply some more wicker white onto our palette. And now we're going to take, um, this is a number 10 flat brush. It's a, one of the smaller flat brushes, just any small flat brush will work fine. And now we're going to create this yellow, uh, yellow, this white detail. So what we're going to do is we are going to hold the brush um, perpendicular to our surface. And we're going to just start out by just making a thin white circle in each of the big yellow circles, OK? And if you want to, you can go um, and draw a circle with a pencil first and then fill it in with your white paint later. It's totally up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, a liner brush or a round brush would also work fine. Whatever you have will work great. Okay, like I said, our circles are not perfect. We don't want them to be. And we're just doing this to all three of our lemons. We're making that white circle. We're not filling it in. So just paint the circle and don't fill it in. And how are we doing on time, John? We are just about 25 minutes in, so. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so now we have our white circles and now we are going to kind of like a little pizza. We're gonna make these lines, okay? So what I like to do first is I like to cut it down the middle and we're still holding our brush perpendicular to our surface. And we're gonna cut it down the middle with all three of our lemons. Okay, now we're going to cut it this way, it's just like cutting a pizza. So it's like we're um, making a third on each half. Does that make sense? We're going to cut it this way. Okay, and now we're going to flip it and go the opposite way.
and I am just applying more paint to my brush whenever it's necessary. Okay, so now we're almost starting to really look like lemons here. So now what we want to do is at where each of these lines connect to our white circle, we're just going to round it out by taking our brush and just making that little arch. Can you see that? Yeah. Making that little arch just so um, our, our lines aren't as harsh. We're going to want to, we want to have a little bit of curvature right there. You see this in our finished lemons, how it's like that? We want it to look a little bit more natural. We want that curve, okay? So we're just making little arches and then filling it in. And we're gonna do this to all of these sides. We want natural looking lemons today. So almost went into the yellow. Buy more paint when you need it. You see? Yep, that looks great. We're making lemons, you guys. And of course, like always, if you want to, um, if you wanna add another coat of your white, you can totally do that if it's not opaque enough for you. Okay. Definitely an easy way to freehand your lemon. Yeah, and then it, it turns out so cute. Okay, and then we have beautiful lemons. And of course, um, you can make them a little bit more neat if you want to. Like I said, you can trace a circular object. Um, we're going a little quick in this class just because I want to show you guys everything there is to know about this pro project. Um, but yeah, so those are our lemons. So we're going to blow dry this and then I'm going to start talking about one of my favorite products, Folk Art Sign Shop. Cool. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to grab our sign shop mesh stencils. And we are going to um, stencil the phrase home sweet home. Okay, so what we want, of course, is to uh, you don't have to do this. Um, you can just unpeel the backing and just kind of place your stencil where you want it. But I always like to cut my stencil. It's totally up to you. You can leave it intact if you want. But if you cut it, you can always put them in like a Ziploc bag to save for later. So we're going to go ahead and cut out our H-O-M-E. And if you wanted to switch it up, you could write, let's stay home. You could write, welcome to our home. The great thing is a lot of these stencils are um, kind of interchangeable. There's a lot of gorgeous patterns and a lot of really cool um, 
alphabets, um, whatever you're looking for, they have it in Folk Art Science Shop. And do we have any questions, John? Um, let me just see here. I don't think so. Let's see. Nope, everyone's just sort of following along. I can see some, I can see some folks painting and others just watching. So um, as you guys will see, and you know, I Emma alluded to, we have this whole collection of stencils at Michael's in this sign shop program. Um, so they are they, they there's this sort of nine by six inch um, collection which he's using now that has oh gosh I can't even I'm trying to think how many different designs uh, you know eight ten twelve I mean twenty I mean many 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 designs um, that you can mix and match and they all are sort of designed to kind of coordinate together they kind of have a look to them um, so when you you know, you can mix and match and do different things or build out sayings or alphabets. And then there's also some larger ones, 18 inch by six inch for, uh, you know, a broader, larger surface. They have alphabets yes. and sayings and fonts and animals and all kinds of cool stuff. And I, I just think this particular stencil is so sweet. You can, re you can have your home and you can replace the O with, um, with this heart or you can replace it with one of these two wreaths. There's two yeah. fun designs. This one has little flowers on it. This one has little holly berries on it. It is adorable. And like I said, you could switch up the phrasing. Let's stay home, home sweet home, welcome to our home, whatever uh, you like the best. Okay, so let's do the easy part first. I always like to do that. So we're gonna save our H-O-M-E right here. And we're gonna take our sweet and we are going to center it in the dead center of our sign. We're gonna remove the backing. They are adhesive stencils. They're kind of like silk screens. If you've ever worked with silk screens before, um, it is this, they have this fine mesh system that allows you to have um, really intricate and detailed designs. I'll hold this up for you guys to see, but you see how um, it's all connected. And it's like I said, those that, um, like how the S connects to the W, it is so delicate and intricate. And you really can't find that in typical stencils. This is something super unique to mesh stencils. Um, there are no breaks, so you don't have to fill in all those pesky breaks anymore. And it really makes stenciling foolproof. If you've ever stenciled before and you've um, struggled with it and you've experienced a lot of bleeding, um, you won't have that issue with Folk Art Sign Shop. It is so easy. Um, Anyone from beginners to experienced crafters um, will really love this product. It is so user friendly. Okay, yeah, so absolutely. let's go. That, that silk screen, the mesh stencil really makes a huge difference. Um, yes. Like you said, bleeding under, and anyone who's tried to stencil knows the frustration of getting too much paint on there and then bleeding under the stencil. I mean, this really makes a big difference. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I think that's center. What do you guys think? Right? Pretty good to me. Let's make sure we'll stick a guy under here and make sure that we are evenly spaced. You know what? I'm going to move it up a little bit. You see what I did there? Um, these are the same height, and I know that I'm going to have home here and home there. And I know that this is as tall as both of those words are going to be. So I'm going to place them here just to see my spacing. And I want to raise it up a little bit. Does that make sense? Was that just crazy talk? No, that was actually really smart. That's a great okay. way to figure out how to doing it. I was thinking to myself, oh, is she going to bust out the ruler and all that? But that's nope. just a very simple and fun way to do it. Yeah. Um, the uh, the stencils absolutely are reusable. And I know that's something that she could, that Emma will, can show you um, later, but you literally can just dip those in water, wipe them off, and then put them right back onto the backing that they came from. Yes, you're in luck. I'm going to show you how reusable they are today. <laughs> So I get so nerdy about stencils. Okay, so we have our acrylic stencil paste and we're going to apply that just right onto our palette that we've been applying our regular acrylic paint to. Ooh, gotta remove the little foil. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys, you don't need a lot. That's pretty much, that's probably all we're gonna work with today. Okay, so like I said in the beginning, we have a lot of great tools to use. There's this um, 
a short flat brush. It makes it super easy. I like to use this one. This is honestly my favorite. I use it for everything, but this is really great for 3D surfaces because it um, molds to the curve of whatever you're trying to stencil. If it's like a terracotta pot or something else that 3D, these are great. We also have some squeegee tools and some silicone applicator tools. Um, the silicone is great for getting into all of those edges and corners. Um, but they all are great and they would all work fine for this project. All right, we are going to um, go ahead and just apply some paint right onto our brush there. And we are going to, we don't need to tap, we don't need to swirl. It is so easy, we are just spreading. And one thing I forgot to mention, just make sure that your stencil is really flush to your surface. We want um, there to be very, very little space there because we don't want the, um, the paint to bleed. And it will not bleed. You just have to make sure, just give it the once over with your hand to make sure that it's flush to your surface and you will be good to go. Okay, and how quick was that? Yeah. We're already like a third of the way done with Super our stenciling. Quick. And obviously, if you if you're not sure of your ability to do it as quick and easily as she did, you could tape around the edge. Look at that. Amazing. It's like perfect. Yes. Okay. And you know what? I don't think that little part of my T was connected. So we're just going to fill them in. There you go. Easy um, peasy. Yeah, that's great. So now he goes in the water basin because it's reusable and we want to save him for our future projects. Okay, that's why I said I always like to have a little bowl of water. Um, if you're working in your kitchen or a place that has a sink, just run it under water. You don't need any soap or anything. Plain tap water is fine. Okay, so now we are going to, um, this is just something I like to do. It is completely optional, but I like to trim my stencils down a little bit just to make them a little easier to work with. I like to really line them up. So we don't need to trim this because the, our word is going this way. So we're going to trim this up here. Just enables you to get the letters closer together without having to stack them on top of each other, basically. Is that the idea? Yes, absolutely, John. And then that way um, I can just tape it together and I can see how the word is going to lay out fully and I don't have to do one letter at a time. You could totally do one letter at a time if you wanted to do that. I like to start with my center letters. So in this case, I would start with my O and my E and center that up and then work um, outward from that. But I like your to just line up my mean. letters. What'd you say? Your O and your M, you mean? Yes. Did yes. I say that? You said O and E. But you put oh, I'm sorry. Down. My O and my M. Yes, thank you for correcting that. Okay, so now that there's only a little bit of space in between each letter, we can um, tape it up. Okay, so first, you know what? I'm going to start and go with each letter. We're going to grab our O and our M. I almost said it again. We're gonna grab our O and our M and we're gonna center those. Actually, you know what? So that is a great technique to do if you are trying to uh, center your words, but I'm just looking now at my sign. Um, the H starts really close to the top corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my H. Does that make sense why I'm doing that? But I would start with my two center or one center if you have an um, odd amount of letters. I would put that in the middle and work outward. But because it is so close to this corner and we want it to live in that corner and live down this corner, we're gonna start with our H. Totally makes sense. You would, and so in, by that extension, when you're doing the second home, you'd probably start with the E and then build to the left. Absolutely, yes. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna line him up in the corner. Let's space it out. Just make sure that when we get to the S, it's not overlapping. We are good. That's another great reason to check that ahead of time because if you've gone ahead and already made your suite, 
stenciled in and then you realize, oh no, there's no room for the home, then you've got to go yes. back. So yes. and and you totally, yes, and you could totally paint over it, but it would just be a hassle, but you could. Right. Don't freak out if you forget yep. that stuff. Let's recenter this M. I mean, it wouldn't be crafting if you didn't have to redo something. Right? Totally. We are all perfect after all. Oh, yes, that's right. I forgot that that was the, what was going on. I clearly <laughs> would not have to, but everyone yeah. else here would have to. Yes. There's a reason why I do the talking and she does the craft. <laughs> I'm not so good at it. Okay, so now that all of our stencils are lined up, we want to make sure that none of the mesh is overlapping on the um, background area. So we want to make sure that we can see all of this blank space. We don't want it overlapping on the gray part of a stencil next to it. So now we just got to make sure it's really flush on our surface and we are going to swipe down again. And you don't have to go in any particular direction, just get that paint on there. That's the great thing about these stencils. It is so forgiving. Right to our water basin. So we can reuse him. And uh, I don't think we mentioned this, but these, uh, this stencil paste is multi-surface. So you could put this on mm -hmm. metal, on glass, on terracotta, of course, wood like we're doing today, uh, painted wood, unpainted wood. Uh oh, I think I got a little too comfortable. I got it right there, but that's okay. We'll just touch that up with our wicker white. Um, we, for those who are just joining, we are using the Sign Shop program from Folk Art today, Folk Art Sign Shop. And yes, all of these products are available at Michael's. It's uh, stencils and stencil pastes and tools all in a coordinated system that enable you to make, you know, signs and other sorts of um, stencil projects quickly and easily. Our last one, beautiful. Okay, so like I said, this will be the last thing we do for the class. I wanna show you guys how these are reusable. So let's clear off our space a little bit. So we have our H that we just used. We're gonna rinse this in our water basin. We just want to especially make sure that all those mesh areas are cleared out and there's no paste left. Okay, this looks good. So we are going to dry it. I like to either let it just dry with time with the adhesive side up on a paper towel. Another thing to mention too is once you wash it, it will still be super um, adhesive. We'll lay our paper towel out and just kind of pat it dry. Or you could use a blow dryer. My best friend, the blow dryer. Mm -hmm. Pat, 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 make sure it's dry. And look, it is still <laughs> super adhesive. <laughs> yeah. It's on there. I mean, you really get, I don't know how many times you can do that and then stick them back. And then 
honestly, once once you've completed that, you could even use a very low tack, you know, stencil adhesive going forward if you needed to do that. Um, totally. But they stay sticky for a long time. Yes, they do. Okay, back onto our surface. Make sure it's really flush to our surface, nice and on there. Going to get some more, and look how much paste I have left. We didn't even like tap into that. Mm -hmm. There's still a bunch on there, you guys. Yeah, well, it goes a long way, like we said. So the black is um, is black stencil paste that comes with the in the sign shop program yes yeah yeah somebody, somebody was asking that so. yeah ta-da and you still Beautiful. get that really crisp clean design just like we did the first time and that design will be just as crisp and clean dozens and dozens of times after you use it you wash it right away you let it dry, reuse it. It is good to go for dozens of times. So before we end the class, does anybody have any more questions? And of course, what we would do is we would just continue with that um, second home on this on this sign. Any questions, Don? Well, um, no, I don't. So people were just checking about the the different products and so on. A couple of people joined late. So if you have joined late, um, once again, we were using the Folk Art Sign Shop uh, stencil paste and stencil program. Uh, Felicia has just put that in the chat, a link to where you can buy all of this stuff. We've also talked about the fact that these classes are all recorded. So you can go um, into the Michaels Classroom Library and see all of these classes, both either there or on their um, YouTube channel. I believe they also put them there. So I think that's all. Thank you for joining everybody. Yeah, and real quick before we end, I just saw a couple questions. Do you need to seal it? It is multi-surface. Um, you do not need to seal it. Um, if you wanted to, I would recommend using uh, Mod Podge Ultra. That is my favorite sealer to use. It is non-toxic. You can do it in your room, in your home. Um, it is not fumy and there's no brush strokes and um, it is just a really great all-in-one sealer. So check out Mod Podge Ultra, but you do not need to seal it because it is for decorative purposes only and it's multi-surface. Yes. But yeah, just like John said, um, thank you for tuning in. If you were late to the class, this recording will be up in about 24 to 48 hours on michaels.com and on their YouTube page. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so glad you did and we'll uh, see you next time. Bye everybody. Take care.